Dylan, what works? Teamwork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi folks, Masako X here. With this particular adventure, we are really going a little bit out there when it comes to how it would come about. However, this isn't quite zany enough to be classified as an April Fool What If, if you're familiar with the moniker, where things get really bonkers, and you can find out what that one will be for this year later this week. Today, everything past the first flashpoint is perfectly reasonable within the lore of the dragon world. Everything from that first point onwards is absolutely legit. It all began with one noteworthy wish made on the dragon, which the person making the wish had no idea what would do to him. All he wanted to do was just be like Goku. But now, he was like Goku, practically Goku in terms of physiology, without even realising what he was. In fact, not even Goku knew what he was, actually, nor did he know what he himself was at all. It was all a mystery. But today, more of this specific and mysterious tale will be told in the question that a lot of you surprisingly had asked about prior to this, despite the baffling scenario. What if Krillin was a Saiyan? When that wish was made, Krillin underwent a transformation which wasn't just physical. It gave him a leg up because he could do with one when it came to his drive to fight and bravery. Granted, he was already a plucky individual, willing to step in even if the odds were stacked against him, quite substantially in fact, but in short, this guy was a very valuable asset to go alongside Goku, and in some cases perhaps outclass him in certain situations perhaps. Thanks to Krillin being alongside Goku, it gave the pair a very interesting dynamic, which included the little duck being in the first wave of people on Nemec and actually putting up a really good defence, and even giving Vegeta a very major headache. In the last part, the pair of them had to put their differences aside when the Ginyu Force arrived and were doing the business of sorting out these interlopers as well as taking out Vegeta because they didn't like Vegeta. However, they didn't take into account the fact that not only had Krillin's potential been unlocked, but he also had Kaioken, which led to a power boost which eclipsed everyone on the planet except for Freezer, obviously. And also, Vegeta had a hole in his chest and then the Zenkai... This of course got the attention of the captain and the body change happened as in the original, only with Krillin instead of Goku. Also, the same in the original story happened was the fact that Ginyu couldn't make the most of the Saiyan's power because he didn't know how to use it. Nor could they actually tap into the power of Kaioken and nor could they read any energies due to the fact that no scouts were working anymore, you know, they also couldn't send energy. Sadly for our duck though, Vegeta got a Zenkai from Dende, healing him as well, double Zenkai, and that meant his power was now equal to his for the moment, and that led to Krillin's body being utterly beaten up in a move driven by catharsis by the prince. Yeah, that'll teach the non-Saiyan not to imitate their glorious species. In the end, Ginyu was eventually put back in his body, and then offed, leaving Krillin back in his, completely paralysed, left to be mauled by an irate Goldo and Berta, who had witnessed most of their squad passing, really badly. Berta and Goldo were toying with Krillin. Even though the Saiyan had enough power to at least defend himself to a very small degree, he was in no condition to do any damage to these two. Goldo and Berta were reveling in this turn of events. They had witnessed this pint-sized person maul their comrades, and now Krillin was in a position to have the same done to him. You are so lucky that we are nice enough to not off you right here and now. I'll go slow, which is saying something can be my reputation. Goldo rolled all four of his eyes and froze time, grabbing Krillin and getting him in an arm lock ready for his buddy. When time resumed, Krillin found himself being pummeled like a punching bag by Berta, who was rapidly barraging him as fast as he could, with the Saiyan unable to break out of this lock, his limbs far too weak and noodly to pull himself free. In the distance, Goku felt Krillin's power dwindling, as well as Vegeta speeding away. Well, that was odd. Why was the prince flying by... Oh no. Krillin! I'm coming, buddy! Goku used up all of his power to speed even faster to the scene, and fortunately for the two tyrants right now, they couldn't sense him coming. It was probably for the best. When he did arrive, his best friend was on the verge of passing out from the injuries handed to him by the blue speedy boy. Hey! Let go of my friend! Berta stopped and looked at Goku. Ah, come to avenge this little one? I fear you may be too late. Poor little thing. Vegeta left him to die as if he were nothing but trash. Well, I won't say no to cleaning up this piece of scum who killed my best friend. 
Goldo was a little unnerved, despite the satisfaction of wasting Krillin. Burner? Are you okay? Shut up, Gulp! In that moment of distraction, Goku elbowed Berta out of the way, sending him flying for quite a distance, and then set his sights on Goldo, who was now quivering with fear. Let him go! Now! Goku was looking at him with a look of fury, and this indeed made the green dude sure enough let go of Krillin. Goku grabbed his best friend and checked to see if he was still alive. Krillin! Wake up! Are you alright? Krillin's eyes squinted open and he smiled. Go! Go! Why am I glad to see you? Yeah, you, you got any sensu beans there, buddy? Goku rummaged in his pocket and produced one that he gave to his friend. Seconds later, Krillin's injuries started to fade away, and he was able to stand on his own two feet feeling absolutely fantastic. Wow! Ah, the feeling of these beans never get old! Thanks, Goku! I thought I was a goner! No problem, but whoa! Now I can actually sense it properly! You've gotten way stronger since I last saw you! How'd you do it? Well, I can show you if you want, but first... They turned to Berta clambering out of the rock pile, and when he saw Krillin up and about, looking fit as a fiddle... Yeah, he noped out of there, he hightailed out of there, grabbing Goldo on the way, because, you know, he's still a fast boy. Uh, buddy, shouldn't we be stopping them or something? Nah, Goku! They're not worth it! Krillin took Goku to Guru's tower and explained to him what Vegeta had been up to. Speaking of Vegeta, his original plan was to go and find the Dragon Balls with nobody around to stop him, aside from Frieza, who had taken a back seat for the moment, assuming that the Ginyus were dealing with the Vegeta pest problem. However, now that he actually had no opposition, Sensu Beans and a Dende. Ooh, he felt a little bit frisky. Was he going to go after his former employer? The prince looked at his combination of Sensu Beans and Dende, mulling over which to rely on for this upcoming battle. In the end, he chose to dump the kid. He took the child to where he could sense Gohan, rudimentarily, and chucked him outside, Gohan rushing outside to see Dende, looking a bit battered and bruised, and spotted Vegeta without Krillin. Wait, where's Krillin? Vegeta chose to make something up. Why would the brat even know? Um, he took a bad spill and I, I had to ensure that this little green one got back unhurt and... Yeah, don't worry, I shall go back for him right now. I promise, I pinky promise or whatever. Gohan scowled at him. He didn't believe him for a second. He knew that Krillin was in danger. Vegeta was only just discovering how to sense energy without the need of machinery. He assumed that what he knew was the same as what the Dragon Team knew and could do. <laughs> no, not even close. Gohan was testing him, and the prince had failed. He was lying. However, Gohan could sense that his dad did find Krillin and had revived him, so they were okay. He chose not to let the prince know because he might not be able to sense it, and it's probably for the best that he didn't know. If he had come here, he obviously wasn't adept enough to sense that the person he had abandoned was back on his feet, and probably keen to vent his anger with some Kai again. Okay, stay safe, Vegeta! Vegeta was a little surprised at how easy this questioning was. He flew off looking particularly confused, but hey... He rolled with it. Dende then told Gohan what had happened, but the latter explained that everything was indeed okay, and that Vegeta couldn't be all that bad if he had actually delivered the former to them directly, not leaving them to find him. He could have just left them out to rot in a random plane, but nope. Still though, he couldn't be fully trusted, so it would seem. Should we go and help your dad, Gohan? Gohan shook his head. No, no need. Gohan and dad will be fine. We just gotta protect this Dragon Ball that we got and make sure Vegeta doesn't come back to find it. When Krillin and Goku got to Guru's, he looked quite weak with Nail explaining that his life force was fading fast. He was also disappointed with Vegeta's actions. It saddens me that Vegeta was not able to overcome his base needs, but I am glad that you are safe, my friend, he said to Krillin. He then spotted Goku and welcomed him. Goku! Guru here can help unlock your hidden potential! Make you way stronger, look at his split! Krillin expected Goku to leap on this actual turn of events, make the most of getting stronger quickly, but Goku didn't look so sure about this. I don't know. It doesn't feel right. I kind of want to earn my strength, you know? I don't want to be given it and stuff. This surprised Krillin. Why was his friend resisting the chance to power up instantly and take out Vegeta and maybe this Freezer guy? This is like a free Zenkai or something without having to go through the painful means of actually getting said boost. Goku, why are you passing up this opportunity? You're being rude. His friend turned to him with a serious expression. 
Well, I think this is something you don't fully get, Krillin, because of, you know, you. Krillin felt hurt by this. So, you're just the same as Vegeta. You think I'm some kind of freak after all? Goku's expression softened. No, buddy. I meant because of your unique nature, you... You still remember your human instincts to seize every opportunity going. If you were born as a Saiyan and lived it entirely, like me, as a Saiyan, you may understand what I'm getting at. But Goku, think about it. Deep down, does earning power instantly like this really seem fair and worth it? Krillin was looking uncomfortable and shifted slightly. Indeed, deep down, Goku was right. The buzz from recovering from those injuries was so good. Sure, the potential unlock felt good in itself, but the Zenkai, in terms of sensation, oh, it topped it, no question. You're right, Goku. I'm sorry for dragging you all the way out here. We're wasting time. It's okay. I know you meant well. Guru smiled. Your resolve is quite formidable, Goku. I wish you the best of luck and respect your decision. Thanks, Guru. Let's go and sort Vegeta out before he gets in trouble. Krillin nods, and with that, they head for where they sense the prince is going. Meanwhile, Frieza had come out of his malaise and felt uneasy. The Ginyus were taking their sweet time, and so he chose to put his scouter back on and locate where they had gotten to. Were they dawdling? But, wait, was the scouter broken? He couldn't sense Ginyu at all. Nor could he sense Rakum or Jace. There were only two of them he could find, and they were busy doing a whole lot of nothing. They were just going in a direction or something. What in the world happened to my crew? Vegeta. He tapped on the scouter and sensed that Vegeta was coming his way. Why? I don't understand those filthy monkeys. He already stole the Dragon Ball, so why is he coming back here and bothering me? Is he really that stupid? Well... I'll give him a lesson that he will never forget, for it will be his last. With that, he puts down his glass of wine, preparing to receive Vegeta. Meanwhile, Goku and Krillin are speeding back to base, and arrive to spot Gohan leaping up and down with the dragon radar. Dad, you're okay! He hugs his father, and then proceeds to tell the group that the Dragon Balls are conveniently located in one group. Vegeta obviously stole them earlier, and Vegeta is nowhere near them. Krillin is perplexed, but then remembers what the prince had said earlier. I don't believe it. What? What's he doing? He's gonna go after Freezer and take him out. Seriously? He's gonna get killed. He's got the sensu beans I brought with us. He'll keep eating them until he's powerful enough to do it. But I don't think Freezer's gonna give him a chance to eat them that often. What do we do? Leave him to it. He got himself into this mess. For us, easy. Go and get the Dragon Balls. He takes the radar and proceeds to lead a scout party to the place where Vegeta had thrown them to. And as for the prince, he's busy being a fool heady with power. In no time at all, with no resistance, all seven balls are back at base as they can sense Vegeta and Frieza face to face miles, miles away. Krillin is mulling over something, now that actually everything had been put into place. It was giving him pause for thought. This doesn't feel right, Goku. I, I just can't leave him to die. We got the Dragon Balls now, and we know how to summon the dragon with Dende's help. I'm gonna go help him. He flies off, and Goku follows seconds later, keen to assist wherever he can. Gohan would go after him, but they need to use the Dragon Balls quickly as Guru is slowly dying, and Dende can feel it. Back at the ship, Frieza and Vegeta are locked in each other's gaze. Vegeta, what brings you back here? You've already stolen my Dragon Balls. I don't have any more. What else are you going to take away from me? I already know what I want. Your head on a spike. Vegeta scoffs. Hmm. <laughs> I can honestly say I'd love to see the same happen to you. I'm far stronger than I used to be, Frieza. You're not dealing with the average Saiyan warrior anymore. Yeah, I thought I'd throw that one in here. Oh, really? Go on, then. I could do with a laugh. Vegeta powers up, and he knows that he will get pummeled initially, but he didn't expect that to happen so quickly, but thanks to the beans in his possession... He will slowly start to toughen up. The fight begins, and Vegeta is down Kaputsky in seconds. But before he passes out, he consumes a bean and gets back up on his feet. Frieza looking surprised. Well, resilient, aren't we? As well as moronic. I didn't hear no bell, Frieza. Come at me! 
This repeats, and Vegeta gets back up again. This time he is able to counter, which surprises Frieza. I don't know how you're doing this, but I'm impressed. Perhaps you aren't as idiotic as I first thought. Or, actually you're more moronic than I thought, because I'm going to let you in on a secret. This form that you see before you isn't even my final form. What? What? Let me demonstrate. With that, Freezer box up and enters his second form. What do you think, Vegeta? How do I look? Vegeta is stunned. Even with his limited ability in sensing energy, he could sense Freezer's power doubled in one go! No mounted beans could counter that. However, luckily for him, Krillin and Goku had arrived to help. I don't need your help! I've got this! Vegeta, stop! You don't got this! said Krillin with a sense of pity in his voice. We got a common enemy here, so just shut up and let's fight him together! You got friends, Vegeta. Don't deny them the chance to witness his power now. That would be awfully rude of you. Freezer then offered Krillin the chance to attack. And he did. At Kaioken times five. With an extra Zenkai. Yeah, Freezer was down. Krillin was amazed by the effects of this latest Zenkai. And he just sped off to finish Freezer off in the distance. And Kaioken times five had done that? It didn't even hurt as much as the last time he'd used it. He was getting more and more resilient. Wow. He was jazzed and wanting to deck Freezer in the schnoz some more. Goku was watching this unfold from a distance, sensing it more technically, and was starting to get a little jealous. Perhaps he should have accepted the unlocking of his potential. Hmm. But before he could regret this any further, Krillin was flying back and then crumpled to the ground. Freezer had returned in a whole new form, looking absolutely terrifying. And that's where we're going to be leaving things for right now. So what do you folks think? How will the trio be able to handle this form of freezer? How many beans does Vegeta have left? Leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. And I shall see you in the next video. Catch you later!